Hello, dog lovers. Welcome to another live show. Hope you're doing well. If you're new here, my name is Saro. I'm a dog trainer, also coach dog owners. And if you want to learn about dogs and if you're interested in learning how to train dogs, how to deal with dog issues, especially without the use of treats, food, aversive tools, aversive methods, force or domination, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you will get notified as soon as I post my next video or I go live. Also make sure to hit the bell icon that will uh, turn on the notification as well. And if you are uh, one of the uh, long time viewers of the channel, welcome back. Thank you for being here. Uh, I want to today start with uh, the saying that we everything that uh, you do a little of step progress that you make it's still a progress if you're doing a little bit with your dog if you're training your dog a little bit if you have started to even think about training your dog it's still a progress but also we can make it better so that's the word of the day uh, small progress is still a progress so progress is the word of the day and I wanted to start that way uh, and start with that mentality that even if we do a little bit of things and every day, we're still making a big difference in our dog's life and also in our lives. So if you are a um, new dog owner or you have a puppy or you have a beagle or you have a dog in general and you have issues and you have trouble, with your dog and especially behavioral issues. Uh, type in your question in the chat area. Please mention your dog's breed and age and sex. It will give me a little bit more um, co um, better idea to give you a better answer as well. And uh, if you are uh, willing to support the channel, make sure to use the super chat as well. That will be ideal and that will be very uh, helpful as well. Uh, you can uh, follow me on Instagram at Sorrow Dog Training as well. And if you want to work with me one on one and you're saying one on one, I mean, this side of the world and you're in that side of the world, you're in Canada, I'm somewhere else. How can we work one on one? Oh, these days is possible. We can do anything that we want. Basically, we can get better results if we work one-on-one -on -one virtually. Uh, and that is mainly because uh, you're not putting your, yourself and your dog in a classroom full of uh, stressed and anxious or excited dogs and puppies. You're going to work with me one-on-one -on -one in the comfort of your home and your dog is going to be in, or your puppy is going to be in the comfort of home. And that's where we're going to start the training, that's where we're going to start improving your dog's behavior and also start to implement the wanted behaviors in a comfort of the home first and then without having any distractions or anything like that. And then we can make a big difference again in your dog's behavior and everything that happens in your dog's life. Uh, so that's how you can work with me, uh, which I highly recommend. And you can learn all about it on my website, sorrowdogtraining.com. Basically, what I do is also I give you an option of having a, do, uh, a session with me to talk one-on-one -on -one to see if we are an ideal uh, pair to work together. If you have any questions, doubts, or anything that makes you wonder what, what, whether this is going to work, whether I'm the right person for you, whether you are the right student for this program, all those questions will be answered. So we do this session for free, and you can always, you know, say no or say yes if you want, and uh, that's. 
So it's about half an hour session that we can talk all about it and answer your questions. Uh, Cynthia Ingram is in the house. Uh, happy Saturday to you as well. Uh, Eileen Barber is Eileen by Barber or seven is in the house as well. Uh, so yes, let's uh, let's let me just put this banner here. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask the questions in the chat area. Let's start with <clears throat> the first question with uh, Eileen, which is having a chewing and digging problem while while we are at work. Don't want to leave chew toys for fear. Uh, fear dog will ingest the toys. Thank you. Yeah, so definitely you don't want to leave any chew toys or anything like that for a dog if it's not supervised. Uh, I highly suggest to supervise whenever you have you are giving some form of um, entertainment or chew uh, or bone or anything like that to your dog. Uh, definitely, that's a, the way to go. You want to make sure that it's supervised. Now, if your dog is having an issue, uh, again, I don't know the, the breed, the age, and the, the, the sex of the dog. Um, but if you're having a chewing and digging problem while you're at work, that, that's a sign that the, the puppy or the dog is bored. Uh, is bored, first of all. And second of all, is communicating to you that this is not what I want. This is too much for me. I'm not ready to be left home alone. Uh, I don't want to be uh, without you. I need companion. I need uh, I need somebody to be here with me. Uh, Eileen, so it's an American bully, one year old. So yeah, so it doesn't want to be home alone. It's It stresses it. Right, it, uh, it's not uh, fun to be home alone. Um, one thing that you have to remember is that dogs uh, are social animals. So what that means is uh, social animals, they like to be with humans or with other dogs. So, so that's the thing. So now you're saying, Eileen, these are good information. I, 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 I love that you're giving me more information to work with. Uh, so you're saying she has her parents' home. They do not chew. So this one-year-old, it is more attached to the humans than to the dogs, I would say, in this case. So what happens is when you are not around, uh, it stresses. So when it stresses, it goes and digs a hole or start chewing. Uh, and wa wants to tell you that, yes, I have my natural parents with me, but yes, also humans are not home and I am stressed. So basically what your uh, bully is telling you is that it's stressed and it needs human companion. Now, the other thing that I want you to remember, first of all, yes, the human dogs are social animals and they like the, to have the, the human companion. Also dogs love to have human supervision as well. Uh, not many dog owners are aware of this. Dogs love to be told what to do and how to do and all that. Uh, for example, if I leave my dogs home alone uh, because uh, they are so attached to us, so, so too attached to humans, to us, uh, they love our companion. If we are home, what happens? They relax. They do their own thing. They lie down. They play a little bit here and there, uh, they do their thing, they relax, right, when we're home. Now, you're saying, why can they do the same thing while we are not home? The problem is that they are attached to humans, and they are, you are part of your dog's life, and your dog is part of your life. So when you're not there, they that, that piece is missing in their life. So they want to have you uh, 
in the air so that you can supervise them. You can give them that confidence, that comfort uh, that they uh, require uh, to have it. They want to have that. And when you are not there, they don't feel probably either secure or confident or they don't feel that they are in a comfortable zone. So your bully, for example, in this case, even though has her natural parents, mom and dad, uh, it still doesn't feel comfortable. It needs your supervision. Uh, it is feeling that that piece is missing in his, his life. The other clue that I get is that it's not confident enough. Uh, your bully. So your one-year-old bully is not confident enough to solve with this solve this problem. What I mean by that is, is, is doesn't know how to deal with being away from you. So one of the things that I usually tell people, if you feel that your dog is kind of in that situation that when you are uh, not home, uh, it stresses so what you want to do is you want to teach it the command a couple of things video, that I'm you can do uh, you can teach your dog you know the weight command uh, this is part of have... uh, for example the weight command that i'm showing um, so basically what it is uh, i start teaching the dog uh, that oh i'm here with you i'm going to tell you to wait but i start um putting a little bit of i would say the stress in the dog by leaving the room what i do i leave the room so there i leave the room and uh, then the dog is like what happened i know you're behind the door why are you doing this but this is how we start preparing the dog to slowly uh, figure out what's going on. You see now it's curious, like, you know, it's moving, what's happening. You went out and you came back and, you know, they, they f slowly start figuring out, okay, this is how we solve this problem, right? You're starting to teach and give some clues to your dog of solving the problem of you not being there. You don't all of a sudden just leave them. You start teaching them that if, if you stay or if you wait for me, I will be back. But let's break it down to parts and pieces so you can kind of uh, have an idea of what you're supposed to do. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to share the link for this video in the chat area. I'll call it the wait command, which is very useful for everybody actually to know this and learn this and uh, start practicing with their dog and figuring out that you know you can um, teach your dog to wait for you and remember again uh, every small progress is still progress every day that you start start teaching your dog a little bit of weight command it gets better and better for your dog and eventually it's going to start uh, not chewing and digging uh, in the house anymore. So remember, first of all, it's a, it's a signal that your dog is giving you that it's stressed. It's not doing it to piss you off. It do, it's telling you that I'm stressed and I'm not confident. And I'm not ready to be left home alone. So do something about it, right? That's what your dog's message to you is. Hopefully that made sense to you. Uh, again, remember, if you want to support the channel, use the super chat option in the chat area. We will really appreciate that. Uh, and if you have any questions, leave your questions in the chat area. Mention your dog's breed, age, and sex. That gives me a lot of information to work with. Just like uh, Il uh, Eileen uh, added a few information there and made me to help her a little bit better. Let's go to the next question from Lisa Maple. Uh, oh, sorry. Let's go to the next question, which was uh, from Gianfranco Mascayano. I hope I'm pronouncing it uh, right. Thank you for being here. Uh, it sounds Italian, I'm guessing. Thank you for being here. 
loving your work it truly it truly sticks out oh that's great thank you uh, any thoughts on red eye during summer my non nine months old husky is naturally fed and is uh, doing um, doing amazing but have a bit of red eyes last five days okay um, this is something I would say is more of um, I would say health issue problem. So I would say just clean your dog's eye just to make sure that there's no foreign object in it. Uh, it could be, uh, you know, during summer, there's allergies also still going on. Uh, could be allergy related. Um, could be an injury as well. So I would suggest, you know, just clean it up with water um, if you could have um, if you have the ability to have some drops uh, in your dog's eye that would be also much better um, clean it up and see how it goes um, maybe wipe with uh, if you are a black tea drinker uh, dab uh, a little bit of cotton swab in a black tea that you're drinking clean up with those uh, with the cotton swab the eyes clean it around the eyes um, and then see if if it's not going away i would take it to the vet and check it with the vet to see what they say um, that that's my take uh, i can't give more information regarding this issue it's not my specialty but uh, you know since i've been working with uh, many dogs i've come across many things that i can have an opinion at least uh, thank you for being here. Let's go to next question to from Lisa Maple. Uh, my boxer pit bull male mix five months old is bullying my nine-year-old golden retriever female. I just had him neutered, but uh, no, that isn't isn't a fix-all. What can I do to help this? Um, So it has nothing to do with, you know, being neuter or spayed or anything like that. Um, it, it is a matter of age difference. One of the things that we have to consider when we are getting the second dog is uh, making sure that the dog that we're getting is a, a good match for our current dog that we have. Um, first thing that we have to consider is our, our current dog. Current dog is the main dog in the house. It's uh, the older one. Uh, it's been there and it has created a rhythm and routine in the house. It has already a system going on in the house. And when you bring another dog or another pet or uh, a new human or whatever, baby or whatever, it causes... Uh, a lot of changes in that dog's in your current dog's routine that can cause stress and anxiety which is not healthy right um and it's normal i'm not saying that don't get a second dog or third dog or anything but make sure that your the dog that you're getting is kind of matching up with your current dog the energy level um a nine-year-old, for example, it's not a senior dog yet. Uh, it's the, we call that prime time of that dog. You know, they're in the prime age, and they're they're confident enough and they're uh, comfortable enough in life. And when you bring a five-month-old, for example, three, four, five-month-old puppy in the house, most dogs. Are, senior dogs they don't like puppy energy they don't want to deal with that you know i'm done with that i don't want to deal with that i don't want to babysit right um and just because they are dogs it doesn't mean that they're going to get along just because they're both dog species your dog older dog golden retriever probably doesn't have the patience for the puppy 
but from my experiences, Goldens are good dogs. They can tolerate it, but they don't uh, enjoy it probably fully, but they need their time. What I mean by that is give your Golden Retriever some time to be away from the puppy, not to be distracted or disturbed by the puppy. And when you have a five-month-old puppy, what you want to do is you want to focus on providing space and time and environment for the puppy to interact and play and socialize with other puppies or dogs, same age, same energy level, uh, maybe dogs who can really tolerate puppy energy and play with puppies. There are many adult uh, dogs who enjoy playing with puppies. Maybe your golden retriever doesn't enjoy it that much, but make sure that you're taking your puppy to dog parks and environments or places or classes that there are other puppies and your puppy can play and interact with them more often than with your golden retriever that needs a little bit of privacy and a little bit of comfort and break, break from your puppy yes it needs a break uh, so focus on those uh, just for example um, have a certain time that you're supervising your dogs, uh, your golden retriever with your pit box of pit, pit mix, and they're playing. Uh, and it's a short, I don't know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes playtime. And then stop it, give them a break, maybe try some other time. But during the day, you have to also invest in time and energy to take your puppy to dog parks or friends or family members or neighbors who have another fi uh, puppy kind of energy dog or puppies, uh, let your puppy play with them and enjoy their company. I hope that helps. Um, all right, so I think um, that's all the questions so far. Um, if there is any other question, let me know. Uh, and before I maybe, you know, just I'll share one more tip with tip with you guys as well. Uh, just so you know, and you remember this, when it comes to your dogs, you want to focus on your dog's daily five essential needs. Whether you have a puppy or you have an adult dog, um, Focus on, you know, providing your dogs daily five essential needs. What are those five essential needs? For example, essential needs of your dogs are the things, for example, you are going to need. What are the things that usually you need in order to have a healthy, happy, uh, productive, um, fun day? What are the things that you need? Think about those, right? You need uh, coffee. You need a glass of wine. You need your car. You need your phone. You need your computer. You need your uh, this and that. You have to go work out at the gym, or you have to go for a walk at the park, or you have to go and see your friend, and all these things. Think about it that way, that you you're, you need all these things in order for you to be happy and positive in life, right? So your dog also has needs. Now, just because they are dogs, their needs are a little bit different than humans. Humans have different needs, dogs have different needs dogs needs are basically comes down to five things which are exercise training socialization care and then affection now mo many dog owners or many people they think oh the main thing that a dog needs is affection and a care yes those are part of it part of the formula but are not the main things the main things are providing exercise, which is physical stimulation. Next, you have to provide training, which is mental stimulation. Next, you have to provide also socialization, which is social stimulation. Care is um, 
physiological uh, stimulation and affection is emotional uh, um, stimulation. So you have to provide all these stimulations for your dog, just same way that you would sti uh, stimulate yourself during the day. So something that I want you to always remember and think about it and before you think, okay, what is, why is my dog doing this? Why is my dog causing this headache? Why is my dog destroying the house or whatever he's doing, right? Think about it. Did I exercise my dog today properly enough? Did I train my dog today at all? Did I allow my dog to socialize today? I'm sure I, you provide the good care for your dog and I'm sure you share a lot of affection, but focus on mainly on exercise, training, and socialization. And again, if, if you want to learn more and dig in more uh, to this topic, topic and learn more about your dog and you want my help to help you to become an educated dog lover, not just a dog lover, but an educated dog lover, uh, feel free to visit my website, sorrowdogtraining.com. There's a tab there that you can tap on, tap it on and set up a, a day and a time on the calendar. And we can talk about it a little bit more and see if I can help you with any issues that you have with your dog. Uh, is there any other questions? Uh, Oh, Cynthia has a question. Let's uh, let's answer Cynthia. Cynthia, oh, wait, wait, wait. It's garden. oh garden. Uh, I since I, Cynthia is a member of the channel, I am going to answer Cynthia's question first, and then Garden will be with you in a moment. Uh, Cynthia is, as I said, is a member of the channel, and she supports the channel all the time. And thank you for being here. And I. Appreciate uh, the the support that you're providing to the channel, Cynthia. Thank you very much. So, hi, Sorrow. Me and my dog are both foodies. <laughs> I trained him with treats, and I can't seem to stop using treats to train him. How do we both stop? Um, one thing that I would say is it's good that you're bringing up the idea that we, you and your dog both foodies. You know, I'm foodie too. Every, I think, in my opinion, uh, every human being is foodie, right? Uh, what that means is we love food, right? Dogs love food as well. It doesn't mean that uh, dogs don't love food. Dogs love food too. But doesn't mean that we need to use treats or food in order to get the results that we want. When we use food as solution, we cause a lot of issues in our, not only in, in our health system, but in our mental system as well. Uh, probably you've heard this saying that, you know, many people, when they get stressed, they eat, right? Stress eat. One of the problems with our relationship with food is that we don't have a healthy relationship with food. Um, many people, they don't know what they're eating. They don't know what they're putting in their body. Uh, and also they don't know what they're feeding their dogs. And also there's no, not much enough information in many dog owners point of view about what they're feeding their dog, what is in their food. So food, the way you look at food, you have to change the relationship that you have with food. And the only way that you can do that is just to step out of um, the main, I would say main media, maybe main information that you get from the food, for example, uh, commercial, anything that you watch on TV and you see on TV, anything that is, uh, not prepared fresh and it's ready to go it's not a healthy uh, i'm one uh, it's not healthy to actually consume and use one thing that I, I one phrase that i read today is anything that is uh plant anything that comes from plant eat it 
anything that is made in the plant stay away. So our relationship with food is not healthy overall, our human relationship with food. Uh, and, and because they are all processed, especially, yes. Uh, so many people, they eat a lot of unhealthy food and processed food and doesn't help them to become a, a, a clean, healthy person to think about food in general, right? So, and then they feed the dog whatever that, you know, companies promote. Uh, so once you step out of the that mindset and you start thinking about food in a way that it feels like you're treating your body as uh, a, a, a machine that needs clean food to in order to for it to perform then you're going to start changing the way that you look at food in general and you're going to have a healthier relationship with food and you're going to be eating you know as a foodie myself for example uh, i eat 99.9% .9 of the time healthy i try to eat good food clean food and when i because my mindset has changed and my relationship has changed with food that has impacted my uh, training with food with dogs as well so when i know that feeding first eating for example i have to eat good food but i don't i shouldn't be eating a lot of food all the time as well so i will for example myself my family my, ourselves we eat two meals a day, for example, and those two meals are within a window of within four to six hours. Uh, and other than that, we don't eat, we don't munch, we don't consume food during uh, or snack during uh, uh, during the, um, the during the day, because I don't want first of all. It's not healthy for us to consume food all the time. Um, when we consume food, it spikes the insulin. And when the insulin spikes, it causes a, um, a lot of health issues to develop in our system, in our human system, and also in our dogs. So I look at the same uh, way to our dogs. If I use food or treats to train my dog or ask my dog to do something, I'm going to be constantly feeding my dog food and treats, which is not healthy. Dogs and animals, you now think about this this way, that dogs and animals, they don't eat all the time. We are animals too, but we are over consuming food all the time. Um, dogs and animals, dogs who are animals, they don't eat all the time. Think about it this way. If you ever come across a, a, a program on TV that it shows uh, wild animals hunting or doing something like similar to hunting, you would see that most of the day they just rest and lie down and do nothing. And they save energy and they cons they don't want to, con uh, con they conserve energy, save energy, right? And then when it, when it, time to hunt because they have got hungry that it could be after two or three or seven days they could be not eating and after a few days they start thinking about okay we are hungry let's go hunt right and that's the only time that they think about food and they go and hunt and kill an animal and then eat it that they can you know there's a window of <laughs> window of uh, eating they eat like their life depends on it they eat that thing and once they eat they're full and they're good to go for a few more days they just go and lie down and do nothing and you will see for example a fully fed uh, uh, animal can be lying down a, a gazelle gazelle or a, a deer or whatever can pass by and they don't 
they're, they're not going to attack it. They're not going to go for it because they're full. They're satisfied. They don't need to eat because, again, animals and nature knows better. They know that you are not supposed to be eating all the time. You are supposed to be eating whenever you're hungry. And the goal of, uh, for example, my relationship with my food is to eat, you know, little, not, not little, I eat whatever I want to eat, but in a window of uh, during the day that I have set that during that time we eat, right? Other than that, we don't eat. And there are days that we eat only one meal a day because we feel like it, we wanna clean uh, our system, we don't wanna stress our system, we fast, we, you know, we've been, in a, we've been busy and things like that, we don't bother with feeding, eating, so we don't eat. So, but many humans, many people, they eat all the time. They, you know, they eat three meals a day, plus all the snacks and this and that during the day. So that's too much of eating. And then that mindset, it repeats in our dogs as well. In, in, in the dog, we're constantly feeding our dogs, not knowing that we're harming them, not knowing that, uh, you know, many dog trainers, for example, they will say, oh, you, you could use their meal as training uh, treat or food while you're training. I don't agree with that either. You know, when it comes to food and eating, you know, you want to let your dog to eat its meal the way it wants to eat. If, if it wants to vacuum it, or it wants to take its time to eat it, let it have its meal in peace and the way it wants to. Uh, why do we need to stress our dogs to use the food during training? Uh, and also, when you understand this concept that, you know, you have a healthy relationship with food and you want to cre create that healthy relationship when it comes to training and training your dog as well, uh, you also understand that dogs don't need treats or food to be trained, right? Uh, because first of all, if you look at 100 years ago, for example, dog owners, they never treat trained their dogs. They never trained their dogs, <laughs> first of all. And second of all, if they needed to uh, get some results from the dog, the dog would have done it for free. I always tell people that your dog is going to do anything that you want for free. The problem is when you start adding treats or food to the conversation, then the dog gets confused and says, hey, I was going to do anything that you were going to ask me to do for free. Now you have brought treats or food in the picture. And now I'm confused. Am I supposed to do for the treats or the food? Or am I supposed to do this task for you? So if you're going to force me to do it for, because we are forcing our dogs to do something and then we're feeding them treat. Overall, that's what dog training with treats is. We are forcing the dog to eat what and so to do something that we're asking the dog says if that's what you want then give me more food right and then it becomes more complicated and confusing for you and your dog because then you are depending on foods to give to your dogs and then your dog is depending on food to do the task as well and your dog says i don't understand you want me to sit i, I could sit i could stay if you want i can s stay all day long if you want, uh, but because you have brought food in our into our conversation, into our relationship, now I'm confused. I have to do this task, read the food, read the treat, after I, I do it or before I do it, you know, you're confusing the dog. So I hope that gave you some idea of the relationship with food and treats and dogs and humans and all that. Um, it's it's inter interesting concept. It's interesting conversation that I can have 
for hours. I have to do a video, I think live video or a separate video all about this in future. But it's something that... Um, it, yeah, it, it, it all comes down to your relationship with your food and your dog, <laughs> right? Uh, if you have a good relationship with your dog, if you have a healthy relationship with your dog, they will listen to you. They will, yeah, without the treat, they will listen to you. They will do exactly what you want uh, without the treat. I, I, you know, it's hard to believe, but I have always had beagles. Uh, so, you know, Jonah, uh, Harvey, and I have Annie at the moment, Harvey and Annie at the moment. Right? I've never used treats or food to train them, and they're well behaved, you know, they listen, they do exactly what I want them to do without treats, without dangling food in front of them and confusing them. They, I've never used treats to train them. I, it's not that I don't give them treats, I give them treats when, when, you know, it's the, that window of eating is open for them. I give them treats during that time. I give them treats just because, not because they did something. I give them treats as dessert. You know, they have dessert as a after their meal. It's not that I'm not against treats. I'm against using treats to train dogs. Okay, that's the that's basically what it all comes down to. Thank you for the question, Cynthia. And uh, let me go back to. Garden. And Garden says, uh, hello, I love your short training videos. Could you do one about teaching a dog to leave food outside? <laughs> I see what you mean. Your, your dog is, um, is eating, is picking up crap on the walks. Um, I have a video. Um, let me see, what is it called? Follow up. Mm. Uh, I only see this exercise with food as reward. Yes. Let me. I have a video about it. Um, but basically, what it is. Uh, no, uh, you know. When it comes to your dog, either when it's outside and it's chasing, let's say, animals or um, picking up food that is not supposed to, you know, it's on the on the ground and your dog pop, picks it up, um, anything like that. Uh, basically, you have to have a dog who knows the the command of. First of all, no, what no means. Um, and second of all, your dog has to be paying attention to you rather than the object or whatever it is on on the on outside. So let me show you this example. So there is this video. Uh, let me see if it's gonna play. To control its impulse control. So, for example, if your dog is reacting to birds and squirrels and things like that, first of all, we have to see what we can practice with uh, in, inside of the house that we have a controlled environment and a controlled situation. So, in this case, I know Rosie is very foodie. So, I'm going to involve food in this training. So, I know she loves food. And I'm going to teach her not to touch this food, okay? So the way you're going to do it is you're going to start creating those cues. So in this case, I'm going to say, Rosie, no. Good girl. I don't really have to reward her with food. I can reward her with praise and see how what she does. So no. Good girl. Yes. Good girl. So right away, she got the point. So as soon as I said no, uh, she stopped doing it. So this is something that you have to practice it a lot until your dog and you get comfortable with it. Uh, here, I'm not rewarding her with the food. 
I'm not letting her to eat the food either. I'm just want, I just want her, and I'm not taunting her either with the food. Uh, so I'm just using it as an example for you guys, okay? So again, if there's food, no? No? Good girl, yes, good girl. Good girl. So believe it or not, she is very foodie. So even though the food is in front of her, she is really respecting the, the cue that she's getting. And believe it or not, also, I haven't done any training with her. This is our first time that we're doing this, and the first time that we're meeting and doing this uh, exercise with her. So as you can see, as I move the food forward, she's actually backing up. She's understanding the concept that she is not allowed to touch it or anything like that. No, nope. good girl. And now the food becomes less valuable to her. So as you can see, she's even walking away from it. So she hasn't, she doesn't want to do anything with it. She is more now interested in, uh, uh, you know, getting involved with me, the relationship that we're building. So this is very important for you to understand that uh, it's easy to tell no to a dog. If you're saying no to a dog from deep in your dark place in your heart and you're saying no to a dog, if you do it with that energy, of course, you're going to have negative effects and results. But if you do it properly, if you do it without any So even if, if I walk away, I'm going to go a little bit further, and I'm going to even test it, go further. So as you can see, she's even walking away. So this doesn't mean that she's traumatized or she's broken. This means that she's respecting the exercise and she's understanding the concept. And believe it or not, it's not the food now that is more important to her. Until now, food may have been important to her, but now she's understanding, okay, that's not important to me. What is important is the relationship that I have with this human being, right? Rosie? Yes. Good girl. Yes. So that's how easy it is. So I hope that made sense. I hope that, you know, it gave you some ideas. I have a video, especially, especially, Specifically for when you're walking your dog on the streets and uh, dogs picking up uh, stuff, I have a video. What I'll do, I'll find that video. I'll after the live show, I'll put it in a comment area. Uh, if you come back to the video, it would be there uh, after the live session. Um, but basically, that's that's it. You know, you just have to make sure that your dog understands that food is less valuable than you. Whatever it's out there is less valuable than you. You have to have more value than anything else to your dog. If your dog is seeing everything else more valuable than you, then you're not going to get great results and you're not going to have a dog who listens. You have to uh, you have to definitely improve the relationship that you have with your dog. So if you improve the relationship, then your dog is going to be more connected to you and more willing to work for you. And how do you improve the relationship? You focus on providing your dog's daily five essential needs in this order, and then you get great results. This is the formula that I use myself to work with my dogs and improve my own dog's relationship with me. I hope that made sense. Um, I think the, um, the last question comes from watch movies one, two, three. Uh, I have a border collie and he's out of control, chasing everything. What do you recommend I do? Give him tons of exercise and do agility, obedience, and nose work. What do you suggest I do? Uh, this is a good question. I can talk about this for hours, <laughs> but I'll narrow it down to a few minutes. Um, basically, when you have a border collie, so 
I, I, I know border collies. I have worked with a lot of border collies and also I have a collie mix as well. So Annie is a collie mix as well. There's a collie in there. So I have a mixed breed dog. She has Basset Beagle, Collie, Lab, Boxer uh, in, in her. So every day I get a breed of her. Uh, some One of the breeds stands out every day. So overall, I understand Border Collie, Collies. Uh, they are working dogs. So working dogs means that they have been bred to work for humans, for humans by humans. Just because they are working dogs, it doesn't mean that you have to work them to death. Doesn't mean that they have to work eight to 16 hours a day <laughs> just because they're working breed of dogs. All that means is they need they need, let me bring this up. They need a lot of structure. What that means is you have to focus on providing exercise, proper amount of exercise and training and socialization with the border collie. Any dogs, any dog has to have, you have to focus on that. But when it comes to working breeds and border collies, these three stand out the most with this breed because if you do anything any of these very wrong in a in a way that it's out of balance it causes a lot of headache and causes you that's the problem that you're going to have um, it's out of control they become out of control so exercise is something that is physical stimulation and you need to provide 30% of exercise should be physical per day. Not more than that. Even less is better. Think about the example that I gave to the answer previously. Most animals, they don't do much. They lie around, they conserve energy, they save their energy, they don't do much. Only time that they do something is when they're hungry, and that's the hunting and they do. Prey animals, dogs and anim dogs are prey animals. And prey animals and dogs are working animals in general. And that's the mindset. They don't exercise all day long. If they do, if there are some breeds, uh, not breeds, there are some animals that they migrate. You know, um, what are those animals? Let me. Uh, world, world, of, world, their bees, for example, they, they, they well, world, their beasts. They migrate. That's what they do every day and all year round. Or year round, they migrate. They move. They walk. Dogs don't do that. Prey animals. They prey. They stay somewhere, hide somewhere, and when the opportunity comes, they come out and. They do their thing, right? Prey animals only exercise or they get active when they need to. So you have to look at it that way. An animal needs 30% of exercise per day or even less. If you have a dog or if you have a border collie who is out of control, I will start reducing it to even 15%, 10%. You got to slow down the brain and physical activity so it will start learning to neutralize itself and then start adding a little bit more exercise to the body. The training is the mental stimulation, which should be 70% of daily stimulation. Now, many people focus on 70 to 100% of physical stimulation and exercise. And they do nothing of no no training, no mental stimulation, or some training per day, and that's when you when you have a problem. And with border collie, we call them the Einsteins of the breeds of the dogs. One of the Einsteins of the breed of the dogs. And when you have an Einstein, you have to stimulate the brain, not the body. They need stimulation mentally. What that means is a lot of training, a lot of games, a lot of uh, activities that includes 
a little bit of physical activity, but a lot of mental stimulations. For example, if you ask your border collie to sit and stay, and you start with a minute and you increase it to 15 minutes of stay in the same spot, right? For 15 minutes, sit and stay, don't move a muscle for 15 minutes. If you do that for 15 minutes, you ask your border collie to sit and stay for 15 minutes and not move a muscle. Ah, oh, that is the best exercise for that dog. That is like the dog is, your border collie is going to say, whoa, that was too much for me. I'm done with today, right? That will slow down its brain and heart rate and mental, mental state of mind, and it will stimulate it really uh, in a healthy way. And when you add socialization there too, which is the social stimulation, you know, border collies are very friendly, good dogs to be socializing too. If you provide that socialization as well, and you tap into those three parts of the stimulation and, and ex uh, essential needs of your dog, you will have the best dog in the world because then you're not forcing your dog to go out of its, uh, out of its um, shell and it stays within the breed. That's the what the breed is bred for. It's bred, bred to do a quick task and boom, crash. Because the other thing that you also, there are two things that I want you to remember. One thing is that when you ask a border collie, for example, to herd or to do something, the example that I give is when you ask a, a beagle to, for example, clean, this room, you know, a big old will do, boom, 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 done, we're done, let's go. But when you ask a border collie to clean the room, the border collie will go and grab the cleaning supplies and mop and everything and will come and start cleaning the place like to, to detail level and you know, meticulously will clean it up in the form that it has to be shining and perfect and then he'll ask you are you happy with it i can do better than this you know they put 100 percent of their energy into that task and when you ask a border collie to do something and it does it remember you're stimulating it to the 100 percent level <laughs> so you gotta bring it down to uh, zero um, and the other thing is again many people because they have border collie or active dog or so-called high energy dog uh, what they do, they do a lot of things with that dog. Agility, you're doing agility, you're doing obedience, you're doing nose work. These are too much for a dog. When you do too much with a dog, it also causes stress in the dog. So you're stressing the dog. And when your dog gets stressed by doing too much, you're overwhelming it. And that's when it becomes, uh, in a way, uh, that mental state of mind that, that your body goes into. I can't rest. I can't relax. What, what, what are we doing next? What, what can we do? What, I don't see you calming down. What, what, how can you calm down? No, you can't calm down. You got to do something. You know, you're driving your dog crazy when you're doing too much. So with the border collie, take it easy. Do as little as you can, because when they're doing little things, they're putting 100% of their energy into it. And I hope that makes sense. I hope that gives you an understanding of so-called working breeds and border collies. Uh, it's a different point of view. I know most dog trainers, they say, exercise, exercise, exercise this dog. But I tell you, do the opposite. Do less activities, physical stimulation with your dog, and do a lot of mental stimulation with your dog. Okay? that helps hopefully okay the garden says i have one last question okay we'll go with one more question some people said it's better to tell the verbal cue when the dog is already performing the action but you say the verbal command first what do you think about that uh, i don't know if i'm clear what it i mean is as the word has no meaning at the start of the training does it confuse the dog 
I understand exactly what you're saying, and I know the confusion. So when we are training a dog, because the dog doesn't know human communication, we don't have any communication with the dog. Right? We don't have any system built between us and the dog. So we have to build some form of communication between us and the dog. So what we have done is we have created obedience training for dog, right? Obedience training teaches the dog to start having some uh, verbal cues uh, already verbal and some cues overall uh, taught so they can start um, building more and more communication skills with humans. Now, a dog, for example, doesn't know what sit is in the first place, right, originally. Um, so you have to word it. You have to, when you're giving a command, you have to say name of the command, name of, uh, name of the dog, command, hand signal. So why are you giving the name of the dog? Because you want to make sure that the dog knows what its name is, first of all. And second of all, the dog knows that you're speaking to it, right? You're not just talking to the air. You're not talking to another dog over there. The dog knows that, okay, you're talking to me. Okay, I got my, you got my attention now. What do you want? And then you say, sit. You give the verbal cue. And then if the dog doesn't know what that means, you teach it what the verbal cue is physically. So for example, if I want to teach my dog to sit, let me, let me show you an example. If I want to teach my dog to sit, I have to tell her or him, or I have to tell the dog, um, this is what I want you to do. Sit means put your bum down, right? Uh, and if the dog doesn't know what that is, I have to teach it, right? Nothing happens, right? So I know she's thinking what to do, boom, she sat, right? Go ahead, sit, and I reward her with a toy <laughs> and a game, okay? So instead of using treats to reward, what I'm doing, I'm interacting with her, right? So she's learning, if, if I sit, this human is going to interact with me. And sit. So you see there, I say, Annie, sit. So I'm giving the verbal cues, of, name of the dog and command, which is verbal cues. And if she doesn't, then I, um, I, you know, just teach her. Boy and a game, okay? So instead of using treats to reward, in what to do, boom, she sat. Right. I say, Annie, sit. So you see, nothing, nothing has happened. happens, right? right? So I have to I show her what to she's do. She's thinking what to do. Boom, she sat, right? Go ahead, sit. And I reward her with a toy and a game, right? So, so introducing the word and the, the, the action of sitting, um, that itself is training at this stage with the puppy, okay? So remember again, we're introducing, right? We're introducing the verbals all first. So the dog has an idea, okay, I'm familiar with the word sit. Yes, I am familiar with that word. I've heard it before. Yes, I've heard you say sit before and nothing happened, right? So you're introducing the word. So the dog is familiar with it. And then you teach it what sit is. And then uh, you kind of continue on training, right? And you practice and practice and practice to the point that, you know, the word and the sit become one. Yes. Word. yes, yes. I didn't expect her to sit and she sat. Let me see. And he sit. Nope. So she's familiar word. with that word, yes. right? Yes. She's familiar with that word. I've heard it. And when I heard that, you want me to do that, right? So they get they make the connection and then they do it and then you just practice and practice to the point that you know you just say sit and the dog sits automatically so i i understand your question i hope i got, got it properly and i hope you got also something out of it yes it, it is the verbal cue come first 
just to introduce the dog to that humans talk, humans speak. And I want you to start paying attention to my mouth and my verbal cues and listen and understand what it means. So you introduce the verbal cues first, and then you teach the physical activity that you want your dog to do, right? Because there's always verbal activity and then physical activity. Sit, stay, come, lie down. Uh, stand all these things are physical activities that you want them to do eventually right but you introduce it with the verbal first and then uh, complete it with physical uh, activity that you want your dog to do all right so uh watch movie one two three says love this thanks for saying <laughs> saying less is better yes less is better it's always you know our, in one more one last thing about that is in our human society the more we do the faster we do the the more things that we do seems like the best thing oh i'm very busy i'm very busy that i don't have time to do this and that oh i have tons of things to do oh you got to do more and more you got to go more and more and not no the less thing you do, the better it is. Because when you do less, you have more energy and time and uh, power to do more. And to, yes, to focus and to do more. Think about it that way. And Garden says, thank you, Sarah. That means you got it. I, 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 I'm sure that you got the point. All right. Thank you very much for being here. That it today I had a lots of fun uh, uh, answering your questions and talking about dogs. I love talking about dogs and dog psychology and give you some tips and tricks about uh, how to train your dog and make it a better dog. If you enjoyed this live show, give it a thumbs up, hit the like button, uh, subscribe if you haven't yet. Uh, hit the bell icon as well to be notified as soon as I go live. And uh, if I, when I go, um, when I put a new video and just a reminder that in new series in fall 2022 is coming the perfect dog plan. Uh, this is the new series that I'm going to be working on uh, this season. And there are some other, some great videos coming up. Uh, I'm planning still. I'm working on filming them and pro producing them and creating them. And will, they will be published soon on my channel. So make sure to subscribe to, so you won't miss these videos uh, are coming. Very excited about the new series. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you want to work with me as well, yes, again, if you have uh, questions and doubts about whether uh, it's possible to work with me and am I going to get great results, uh, am I going to have uh, a good dog if I work virtually with you, all these questions can be answered. I can give you a good answer uh, whether we are a good match or not. Uh, just simply by visiting my website, website sorodoctrine.com, and uh, also um, there's a link there that you can um, um, click to set up. Uh, uh, I put the link in the chat area to set up a day and time that we can chat and go from there. All right. Thank you very much. And until next time, have fun with your dog. Thank you, Cynthia, as well.